Ecological assets are features of the natural ecosystem, such as aquifers, creeks, and foreshores, that provide equivalent civil municipal goods and services, like nutrient cycling, climate regulation, and stormwater reduction. By considering natural, as well as engineered assets, an ecological asset approach recognizes that nature plays an essential part in a municipality's infrastructure. An ecological asset approach uh, to a community, it provides uh, the ability to provide services to people at a reduced cost, um, with a reduced risk, and with tremendous benefits to the environment. For me, those are the, the, the greatest benefits. So as we start thinking about the implications of extreme weather events and increasing extreme weather events, um, EcoAssets provides infrastructure that, that is able to adapt and flex with that. The main benefits that uh, an EcoAssets approach can accrue to any given society is greater resilience to climatic change, more vital ecological services, a healthier environment that leads to planetary health and leads to sustainability and to resilience in the way our society can perpetuate its existence on the surface of this planet. So what, what local governments are faced with right now, and this is, this is kind of the selling message, is the unfunded infrastructure liability, which means all the other services, you know, water, sewer, roads, they can't, we can't afford to replace them. So in terms of the argument for uh, eco-assets is, well, you can save money by avoiding a cost downstream of not doing it right at the front end. Ecological systems provide a wide range of benefits. So in addition to having infrastructure that perhaps is less of a burden on the taxpayer, it's also going to provide recreation, it's going to provide um, improved health um, benefits, increased tourism, um, a whole range of, of benefits to those in the community. The challenge that we have are threefold. Uh, nature itself is undervalued, it's underpriced, and it's overused. Our built infrastructure is decaying at a faster pace than we can afford to replace. And nature itself knows no boundaries, meaning that uh, within our geographic area of a defined town, uh, that's not the definition of, uh, we, we don't plan uh, we have the ability to plan at a watershed scale and that, that's the scale that we need to be doing our work. Political will can be a very big challenge. Um, when we think about ecological assets, um, they don't know political boundaries. <laughs> so, uh, so certainly um, the ability of, of different jurisdictions and different levels of government to work together uh, is going to be a key challenge. We're also heavily invested in the status quo in terms of the cost of our existing infrastructure. Also, the direction in which our society is going is development that is not sustainable, and we're going to have to change practices and attitudes to ensure that we can sustain our presence in places like Vancouver Island in truly meaningful ways which require restorative development.